I appreciate the opportunity for us. This is a great time of the year. We're one week, less than one week from opening day next Friday. Um, there's certainly some excitement to that. There's some angst to that. Uh, we're going to scrimmage again this afternoon, and hopefully our pitchers will throw better today than they did Friday or Saturday. Uh, but it's an exciting time of the year. Uh, baseball for life is a great title. I had my world turned upside down a little bit in the fall with it automobile accident, and I think baseball for life is probably playing a bigger role for me than it ever has. Um, January 14th, um, when our players came back to school, could not have gotten here quick enough. February 15th, opening day, while it seems close, is taking forever. Um, so this opportunity to get involved with Mike and his group is outstanding. Uh, I couldn't wait to get down here and, and visit. One of the great things about the sport of baseball, and I think coaching in general, is the fact that we share, we talk, I don't think anyone feels like they know it all. Uh, we still take time, and I think that's part of the energy I have, to take time to talk to some great people around the country to find out how to do things better. We all have challenges. Those who aren't full-time baseball coaches are going to have challenges managing their job, their family, and I've got to run a youth baseball practice. We've got challenges with recruiting. We've got challenges with some admissions part, parts of things. Everyone's got a challenge, facilities, timing. But if we want to keep young men engaged in our sport and keep moving the good athletes forward, playing baseball down the road, and as a college coach, I certainly hope for that, and Mike Schilt, professional baseball, certainly hopes for that. We've got to make the experience of their baseball enticing to them. We've got to make sure the practice environment is productive. We've got to make sure they're getting quality repetitions, that they don't walk away from practice going, that was a pretty tedious hour and a half I just spent. I think I'm going to wind up being a soccer guy. We don't want to lose those guys. We don't want to lose those guys. It takes a little bit of work from a coaching perspective at the professional level, at the college level, high school level, youth level, to do that. But I think it's work that's worth doing. One of the things I've been really good at over the years and my wife would tell you I was a pain in the neck to her, which is why she wound up going out with me. I've been able to, I've always reached out to coaches around the country who I've known, who I've never met before, to ask them, how does this part of your baseball work? One of my closest pitching coach friends is in Texas. I read an article where he was mentioned, and it referenced another guy who he mentored under, who I knew a little bit, had great respect for. So I called John. Never heard of him before, or he'd never heard of me. And we spoke about what I read in the article. We've become close friends, and a lot of what we do pitching-wise is related directly to my relationship with John. Now, I could have read the article and tried to figure it out. I figured, you know what, I'm going to pick up the phone and give him a call. Mike Schill made a comment to me a few weeks ago in an event um, about something the Cardinals were doing pitching-wise as an organization. We haven't had a chance to talk about it yet, but he's going to get a call from me this week, and we're going to talk. Two years ago, I felt like we needed to be better. I needed to be better from a base running perspective. So I spent time with a retired coach who is probably the base running guru in the country, spent two hours with him up in Durham on a baseball field with my iPad watching him walk me through how to take leads, how to steal bases. Exciting stuff for me. We bring it back. We apply it, or try to apply it. Three weeks ago, I picked up the phone and called a, a buddy of mine who's now a real estate or a uh, insurance salesman in Tennessee, was a pitching coach at North Carolina for a long time. And I wasn't calling to see how the family was doing. I did that a little bit. But I wanted to find out something about the way he communicated his different pitch calls to his catcher. So I think that type of passion and reaching out to people is going to help you develop more knowledge depending where you are. You want to find out how to run a good practice, well, pay attention today, jot down some notes, and then let's figure out how do we, how we apply that when we get back into our practice environment. I, I'm a strong believer that when we run a practice, we need to have short segments that are based off of timing as opposed to how many reps we're going to get. If we've got parents, assistant coaches with us, we need to utilize them. Maybe this parent who's helping me doesn't know a thing about baseball, but I bet you he can do front toss for me while we hit on the field, or he could hit a fungo, or he could take pitchers to the bullpen. I know there's 
Time challenges for sure. But I also know one of the best things you can do is to reach out to coaches that are available, find out how you can structure a practice, and then apply that so that that practice environment for the player is high paced and he leaves going, wow, that was unbelievable. I got a ton of ground balls. I got a ton of swings. I worked in the bullpen. I got my fly balls. You've done it within the framework of your timing. And they come away excited and not can't wait to get back to the next practice. When we post a practice schedule for our guys, we try to map it out as detailed as we can. We put it in two places. They should never ask me, what hitting group am I in? You got two places to see that. Walk into the clubhouse, walk into the dugout, go to the fence, wherever it is, look and see, I'm in group two. We're gonna hit the cage first, then we're gonna hit in the field, then we're gonna do two defensive segments, or we're gonna do a base running segment. We try to answer for the players as many questions as we can when we post our practice schedule. Years ago, I, my daughter's a volleyball player in college. I went and watched her uh, club volleyball team play. I had seen a club team of hers play at the age of 14, and I didn't know volleyball, but I could have run a better practice than what I watched. But then I went and watched the club team that she played on at the age of 17, and they went full speed, game repetitions, phenomenal number of reps, and I came away from that saying to myself, and I talked to Hal Bagwell about that earlier today, I came away saying, you know, even if the mechanics of what they were being taught weren't necessarily correct, which wasn't the case, but even if you weren't paying attention to that, the fact that it was such a high-paced practice, it allowed them to get better just by doing the activity over and over again. Now, the challenges you guys have as coaches are touching base on some mechanical things. How to swing the bat. I think that's important. There's a lot of theories about it. Mike Schilt's going to talk in a little bit about it. I think the probably the most important thing as youth coaches you guys could, could become more knowledgeable about, or, and, and we still do it ourselves, is arm care, workload, proper throwing mechanics. When you're dealing with throwing athletes, it's a different animal than any other spot. You know, how do I teach this player to throw the baseball correctly? What types of things mechanically can I correct that may help him do that? And on top of that, how should I manage his workload? How many times should he pitch on a weekend at the age of nine? How many times should, I, should he pitch in an AAU tournament where they've got to win three games on Sunday to advance? I've got some really strong opinions on that. I'm sure others do too. But you, so you, you ask those questions. You pick the phone up, you call me, you pop an email, and if I don't know the answer, I'll find out somebody who does. Those types of things are critical to keep players engaged so that they stay healthy and stay excited about what they're doing. We had a pitcher on our USA team I was with back in uh, 2003. They were all in college at the time. A guy named Jared Weaver, pretty good right-hander for the Angels right now. Uh, we've pitched 46 innings for us that summer. He gave up his first run in the 44th inning of the summer. We had our, a, another guy in that rotation, his name Verlander. So I was probably the best pitching coach in the country that summer. <laughs> Bar none. Our, our closer was Houston Street. So I basically made sure I wrote the names down. Uh, if they did 17 push-ups before their bullpens, I counted them. Well, I watched Weaver throw bullpens all summer and talk to him about what the routine was, why it was such. I was intrigued by it. End of the summer, I called this pitching coach at Long Beach State, who I never knew, uh, Troy Buckley. Had a great conversation, developed a great relationship. And he and I have exchanged information about some things we do. Well, that's how you get better, and that's how you stay passionate about the game. That's what keeps me energized every year. You know, when I sat down the last year or two years ago and just said, I got to go visit with Mike Roberts and talk about base running, I was pretty excited about that. On the ride here today, I called two of our pitchers who were getting ready to who pitched on Friday, and I said, hey, I want to get with you guys. I got a couple things I want to work with you on before we start today. When I get back up from the, the, the event I'm going to in Charlotte. So let's go ahead and take a little bit of extra time. We'll go before we start stretching. I, I, was, I can't wait to get back there and do that. And two, the two things I'm going to apply to them are things that I've learned from other people. We all steal. There's nobody doing too much original stuff. But the key is to steal, to ask, to borrow. 
I need I need some better defensive drills. All I know how to do is hit ground balls. Well, how do how can I improve my defensive practice for my players? How can I get them more repetitions? When you pick up the phone, you call folks. You research stuff. If you don't have a lot of experience doing it, the best way to do it is to ask, read, and watch. Pick the phone up, call folks, read things, watch videos. And then if you're not sure, if you want clarification, reach out and call those people. We all love talking about it. If I, need, if I can talk to you at 10 o'clock on a Monday morning about lead-up pitching drills as opposed to doing some mass recruiting stuff, please call me. <laughs> please call me. We'll try to do that as often as we can. I, want, I think you need to be overly, overly organized when you get into a practice environment. When you do that, the players develop a passion for the game. They come away excited. We want them to get better. We want them to be able to take the skills they've learned and to keep going and work that extra time and not just work the hour and a half that you've got them. Do they, can they play soccer, basketball? Absolutely. Excuse me. Be tied into other sports. Become athletic. But make it a situation where they can develop a real passion for the sport, and that's really going to be coming from you. Get to the field, be energetic. They're going to read when you're distracted. There's certainly days, depending on what level of play it is, how old the players are, how good you are, when you're going to be irritated at your team from the last time you got together. You're mad about the result Sunday. Our players read a book via the suggestion of another coaching friend of mine over the break called The Way of a Champion. Highly recommend it. And it basically says you have to focus on the process. We talk about that with our guys all the time. You have to have a short memory. You can't worry about the ground ball you just booted. Correct it. Coach them up and correct it. Move to the next ground ball and be one for one on that one. You threw a bad pitch, throw a better one now, whether it's a bullpen or whether it's in the game. And channel that energy into making sure you're focusing on that process. Our players are meeting this afternoon on their own and talking about their team goals for the season. That's fine. It's going to be win X and, you know, do this and go here. That, that's great. And then I'll tell them when we stretch today at 3 o'clock, the first thing we got to do, the most important thing we're going to do right now is to stretch properly. Then the next most important thing we're going to do is to throw the baseball properly in our throwing drills. We're not going to worry about next Friday. We can't control that. I, I'm not going to worry about, my wife may disagree, I'm not going to worry about whether we win Friday or not. I'm going to worry about the things that, as a coach, I can control. Creating a practice environment that is productive for them so we can prepare them, leading them to opening day. Provide information to our opponent as we can throughout the week. And then when the game comes, I'm going to manage the part of it that I can. How to use pitchers whose names to write in the lineup, when we should bunt, hit and run, steal. But we've done all the physical prep to that point, and I'm going to worry about that moment. After my accident, I, had a, I talked with a, a, a very good friend, and I was counseled to stay in the moment. Don't worry about what it's going to be like in five years or how you're going to feel when you're 65. Worry about this repetition and rehab right now. Worry about this ground ball you're going to field in practice right now. Don't worry about who you're facing on Friday. Let's make this a great bullpen today. Let's make this a great job behind the plate. We're going to block today. We're going to get better defensively behind the plate. So as coaches, you try to provide them structure where you can touch base on all the things that are important to you as a coach. Define what part of the baseball game are going, to have, are going to have the biggest impact, prepare them, and then when you get to game time, let them go. Correct them, coach them up. If they have a bad at bat, don't let them give you the bad body language coming back. Try to get them to clear their head, get ready for the next at bat. Get ready for the next at bat. I can't stress to you enough how important it is for the guys to stay in that moment. And it became a little more realistic for me uh, since the middle of September. And I think one of the things I take real pride in is the fact that we've reached out to some of the best people in the country, have put together a pretty good plan, and I think at the end of the day, our guys go, wow, that was a fairly productive practice. I hired three new assistants this year. One of them played at Vanderbilt. Um, 
the, the other one played for that assistant at another school, and then I hired a former player of ours. Well, Coach Taylor is a very skilled assistant coach and was very impressive when we interviewed. Another reason I hired him, because he played at Vanderbilt for Tim Corbin. And I know Tim, I've known him forever. I'll pick the phone up and say, Tim, tell me about your, the bunt game you do or your ground ball game you do in practice. Better yet, I've got one of his former players here who's now implementing the things that Tim Corbin did. That makes us a better club automatically. Do we win more? I don't know. I don't know if we, that's going to happen. But I do know that our practice environment is good. I know it's productive. Years ago, I hired a, an assistant coach who played at Western Carolina. He did a phenomenal job with us. Coach Her and I was, was with us at the time. I hired Coach Tao because he played at Western Carolina. And the coaches at Western Carolina were tight with Jack Leggett. And they were bringing stuff from Clemson. And I've known Jack forever. So now we're implementing stuff from Jack Leggett through Western, through Damon Tao at Davidson. And I'm not that smart to think that I've got, that, got it all figured out. So now we're doing our square drill differently. You know, we're doing our, some short game stuff differently because I'm bringing it in from people who are pretty good. So I, I ask you guys to please reach out to coaches anywhere. Great story about, um, who's the quarterback for the 49ers? Kaepernick. Uh, his college coordinator was getting calls from NFL guys, his college coach. They're reaching out to high school coaches at the football level to implement some of these offensive things. So it's not, okay, we're professional football guys. We're not. We know it all. None of us know it all. We want to know more. We want to learn what you guys are doing, what works good for you in practice, and we want you to reach out to us. You've got a great opportunity here today to visit with some of the best baseball people in the area, and we encourage you to take advantage of that. And then beyond this event today, continue to reach out, ask questions, send emails, make phone calls, and we'll talk to you about it. And hopefully, you know, you'll make a connection with a, a John Maley type pitching guy in Texas, or, you know, hopefully we, we resonate with you and there's something you can take away that you apply to your folks at home. Thanks very much. Have a great day. And uh, please reach out to us as you can.